Hi there! Today's video topic is version history and version tracking with your Power BI PBIX files using Office 365 and SharePoint Online with OneDrive. And this is by far the easiest way to keep a version history of your files and it's very uh, non-invasive. So what we're going to do is um, you can either use an existing document library, so um, one with a bunch of other files in it, and create a folder in here, just called pbix, and put your pbix in there. Or um, what I like to do is create a separate library just for some separation of content and organization. So I'm just going to go to this plus new menu up here and create a new document library. And that does is it creates a new link in the sidebar here. Um, document libraries in SharePoint are basically folders, um, big folders that have a set of permissions and settings attached to them. So you're basically creating a folder. So pbix library, I like to create one folder per workspace and then put all of the pbix files that I've published into their associated workspace folder. I'm just gonna call this workspace one and workspace two. All right, so now what we want to do is sync it. So just click the sync button in the library. And depending on if you've used OneDrive or not before, it might ask you to log in. So it is working down here. And if you, depending on your setup, you may have two versions of OneDrive installed. You might have a personal OneDrive and a OneDrive for business. You can tell the difference when you hover on them. So the personal is going to say OneDrive personal. And then the one that is associated with um, Wonder for Business is going to have the name of your tenant on it. So here's my tenant. I'm, I'm okay sharing this because this is a dev tenant, so it's fine. Wonder for Business is going to be the one that syncs to SharePoint. So that's always the one that you're going to want to use. And what we can do now is go to our file explorer. And what that did is it created a new um, section in our file explorer sidebar that is the name of our tenant. And under that is um, basically every single document library that you sync is gonna get its own folder that has the name of the site in it. So I had one created already in here from earlier when I was playing around with it, but the one that we just made is this one right here, this demo team site pbix library. And what OneDrive does is it will only sync things down that you try to open. So if you have a backlog of, you know, 100 pbix files and they're all 100 megabytes, if you sync that library, it'll be fine because it's only going to download the things that you try and open. It's not going to take up your entire hard drive when you do this. So let's save a file here. I'm just going to open one real quick. And you're just going to go to the File Save As menu and it'll show up as a location to save to. All right, looks like we want this one. All right, so when you save a file to that synced folder, it's not going to sync up, sync up to SharePoint until you close the file. So I'm gonna close this for demonstration purposes. Every time you save, it'll create a version as long as you close the file. Um, and what we can do now is if we go into this folder, so you can tell what the status is on the sync just by this icon here. It turns green when it's done syncing. It's blue when it's working on it. So let's go ahead and check back in SharePoint and make sure our file's there. So if we go back here and open up our folder, there's our file. And you can check in and check out these files if you want to. Uh, there's a, if you just go into this ellipses menu here, there is, if you go to more, an option to check out. When you have a file checked out, nobody else can edit it until you check it back in unless um, you discard your checkout, which you can also do. So now if we go to that same menu and go back to more, you have an option to discard the checkout or check it in. And when you check it in, you can add a version comment if you want to, which is pretty useful. These show up in the version history. So now if I go in and look at the version history, there's my two versions and this one's got a comment on it and I can restore any of these that I want to just by clicking this little down arrow next to it and restore. When I restore it, it's gonna create a new version 
in addition to the ones that are already here. So you'll never lose anything by restoring something. So now if I close this and reopen it, three. Now I've got three versions because I restored one of them. And you can also download any of these versions if you want to just look at it. So if you just click on the date here, what it'll do is download that file to your desktop. And that's useful if you want to try and figure out which version you need to restore before you restore something. And everything you delete from here will go to a recycle bin for 90 days. And it's pretty easy to restore things from there. So if I delete this, the recycle bin is just in the sidebar. If you don't see it in the sidebar, you can also get to it from site contents. There it is. If I want to restore it, I can just put it back. If I go back there, my file is back. And you can also get to the same version history from your file explorer on your desktop if you want to. Uh, you just right click on it and then uh, depending on what version of Windows you have, it'll look a little bit different. I'm on Windows 11, so I need to go to show more options. And then it's got the version history here. You can't currently check it out from your desktop, but you can look at the version history. And if for whatever reason you're having trouble finding it in SharePoint, you can go to view online and it'll open up the right folder for you. As far as configuration goes, um, the the settings for version history change over time in Office 365. So what it's currently doing is if I go to library settings, it's more library settings option under versioning is where you'll have all of your, um, your settings that you can modify. So it's defaulting to 500 versions right now. Um, it used to be that you could erase this and it would keep unlimited versions, but now if I try and do that, it tells me that um, it needs to be between 100 and 50,000. And I don't think you'd ever really end up with more than 50,000 versions of a PBIX that you want to restore, but just so you know. All right, so that was how to create a version history of your PBIX files using SharePoint. Thanks for watching.